Hello and welcome to episode 110 of the Giddy Knits podcast. As always, I am Helen and I am coming to you from Dundee in Scotland where I live with my husband Tom and my two boys, Arthur who's eight and Jasper who is five. Today is, I don't actually know, today is Monday the 17th of January and welcome. Welcome back to anyone who watches regularly, it's so nice to see you and um, hello to anyone that is new and watching for the first time. If you are new and you don't know who I am then obviously as I said I am Helen um, and I am the dyer behind Giddy Yarns and this is my crafting podcast where I talk about all of the crafting projects that I've been working on basically. Oh, right, what have I got for you this week now that I've got through the introduction? I have got a um, quick five second announcement section as always at the beginning. I have a finished object to share. Um, I've got a work in progress that I'm going to talk about. I've got a new cast on to talk about as well. I've got a little bit of yarny goodness which also crosses over slightly into just a little bit of a blanket chat. Um, and then at the end I will just finish up with a little bit of shop news and a little other news I've called it, a little life chat I guess. There's a few things I was going to chat about, that was all. Um, right, should we get into it? So first off, announcements as always. Um, just a quick one to remind you that we have the Giddy Yarns Make Along that is my ongoing make along. Words failing me already, never good. Um, my ongoing make along that just runs continuously and I draw prizes every quarter. You can enter it in three places. You can enter it in the Ravelry group, you can enter it on in our Mighty Networks group, and you can also enter it using the hashtag on Ravelry. Oh no, on Instagram. <laughs> um, all of those will be linked underneath the video, so you should be able to find details of the rules and how to enter down there. But basically, any project that you're working on that uses at least 50% of my yarn, so at least 50% of Giddy Yarns, and is finished, can be entered to be in with the chance of winning a prize. Talking of the Ravelry group, um, I have. I need to chase up one person thinking about it, but um, I had some um, responses to my suggestion of maybe getting a moderator. So we do have um, a new moderator over in the group um, and that is Hilary. Um, so she will hopefully be keeping an eye on things a little bit when I forget and replying to comments and things like that. So thank you so much for helping out there. Um, and if anybody else fancies having a go at moderating them, by all means, give me a shout. Um, also, I don't know if I can do it in the Mighty Networks group as well. Possibly. I might be able to. So, um, yeah. The more the merrier. <laughs> um, right. Let's, let's move on to some knitting. Let's talk about some, a finished object. I have a finished object. It feels like it's been a while. But I have finished my Storm's End cowl. Excuse, excuse the slightly dodgy blocking, hence the little knobbly bit in the middle there. Um, I couldn't find my blocking pins for some reason, um, so I just had to use normal pins. I couldn't find my blocking, what, what are they called? Like I've got the Knit Pro blockers um, that create a much nicer line, um, so I just had to use some normal pins. Um, they're probably somewhere in the garage, but it's a little bit chaotic in there at the moment. Um, but yeah, here it is, all finished. I will give you a bit of a close-up, oh, without dropping it in my tea, hopefully, or oh, so you can see the texture there. Um, I blocked it gently. I didn't block it too... I could have blocked it a lot more firmly, um, but I didn't want to block it too firmly. Um, but I like the effect you get with those garter sections in with the stocking stitch sections. Um, and I'm really pleased. I just love these colours so much. I'm so pleased with this whole combination. There's something about the fact that I've designed the pattern and I've dyed the yarn and they work together so, so well that I'm just ridiculously pleased with it. Um, so somebody asked me the other day on Instagram whether I would have kits. Um, I probably won't have kits ready for when the pattern is available. Um, I'm planning on having the pattern available by the end of this month. Um, I've got quite a lot to do because I'm having a shop update at the end of the month. Um, so I've got quite a lot planned and I hadn't factored into that dyeing kits for this. Um, so what I might do is pop up some pre-orders um, and then I can get them dyed up in the beginning of February. Um, so I might do that. 
But yeah, if anybody would be interested in kits for this, then um, just let me know whether I should pop some in the shop. But I will be doing kits for shows and things like that. So I will definitely have kits for East Anglia Yarn Fest in March. Um, and then any of those will go on the website as well. I'm also hoping to do some slightly brighter kits. So I have a pastel rainbow kit and a brighter rainbow kit. Um, and they'll be available with the pattern. So there we go. It is all finished. I could put it on, couldn't I? Oh, there we go. It's a nice, my original sample, I think I said this when I showed you the original sample, the original sample I knit with the wrong size needles. Um, I knit it with a four millimeter needle and then when I wrote the pattern I decided actually I didn't like that needle gauge as much so I wrote the pattern, I suggested a three and a half millimeter needle and I'm much happier with the three and a half millimeter needle. Um, it's a much tighter gauge and it fits better. So there we go, one rainbow cowl. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. It's a really simple pattern. Um, it's just knits and pearls and you knit in the round. Um, so it is a very simple pattern. There are quite a few ends to weave in. Um, but what I tended to do, and actually I've, well, you can see the back, look, there you go. There's the back where you can see where I've wove, woven my ends in. Um, you could probably you could potentially maybe use helical knitting techniques to change your colours, possibly. I'm not sure how that would work. Um, but if that's the back, I don't think it's too bad. Um, and I wasn't particularly careful. In the end, what I actually did was I um, knit or purled my... Um, let me just see if I can show you this. Hang on a second. It's going to be easier if I fold it up a little bit. Um, I actually um, purled see if you can see this if my camera will focus there we go um i actually purled um the tail yarn into the first row as i went along so i just held it double for a little bit and unless you look really really closely you can't really tell from a distance but it meant i didn't have to weave in as many ends um which i was very grateful for so there we go one finished object and it is nice to have something off the needles and it's also one of the projects that I was hoping to get finished in January as part of my my little minimal January goal. Talking of January goals, um, let's move on to my work in progress because that is another thing that I'm hoping to get finished during January. Um, and that is of course my Cupid's Arrow Wrap, which I've talked about this bag before, I love this bag. This bag is from Ellie at Craft House Magic and the pattern is by Ellie at Craft House Magic, so it seemed fitting. The yarn is not. The yarn is um, the 2020 Spectrum Fibres Advent Calendar and the pattern, as I'm sure you're all sick of hearing by now, is the Cupid's Arrow Wrap. I'm going to move that because it's going to block the light. Um, which is, as I said, a pattern by Ellie at Craft House Magic. This is the pattern. Da, da, da. And I have added again a couple more colours since I last showed you. That little progress keeper is where I was the last time I showed you this. Um, so I've added two more colours and I've just started on the next one. So I'm just moving from this kind of pinky peachy combo into this yellow speckled combo. Um, so I'm just, just at that point. So I'm getting then, I am now on colour, I should have checked this before I recorded, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I'm just starting colour 14. I was hoping to get this finished by the end of the month and what are we now? We're now the 17th, so I could potentially, potentially, if I have a few more evenings, I have discovered now that I can knit on this and read my Kindle at the same time. So that has been quite nice. Um, Tom has been playing some computer games in the evening and um, I've been able to just sit and read my Kindle, keep half an eye on his computer game and um, knit on this at the same time, which has been quite good. So it is, it is slowly getting some progress. Um, I'm really curious how it's going to look overall um, and I'm quite glad to be moving out of the pinks because there were a lot, a lot of pink. <laughs> um, so I am quite glad to be moving out of the pinks into more yellowy colours. I think I'm going, I'm going to get these out. 
Um, so these are the next few colours I think. We're heading kind of yellows and then we're heading into greens and then heading into blues and finishing off with the blues I think. That's the plan at least. Um, so we're getting there. You can see the rest of the me's just in there. We're getting there with it slowly. Is anyone else still working on 2020 advent projects? Um, yeah, it does seem a little bit daft. I've got so many ideas for the advent calendars that I got in 2021 and to still be working on a 2020 advent project um, does feel a little bit daft. But I will love it when it's off the needles and I will be glad to get it off the needles. I do have a new cast on, which considering I wanted to get things finished by the end of January is probably not the best idea, but these were supposed to be cast on at Christmas. So I wonder if you've guessed. <laughs> I have cast on the Yuletide socks, finally. So I'm using um, the yarn that I dyed up at the Wool Lay Retreat. And the pattern I'm using is the Yuletide socks, which is a pattern by Suzanne at Green Lambkin Yarns. Um, I'm altering the pattern a little bit because, um, firstly, because I like a 68 stitch sock rather than a 64 stitch, stitch sock. Um, I find that fits my foot better. And secondly, because I didn't want to do the pattern on the back of the foot. Um, so I've had to add a knit stitch on either side of the front just to give me the, either side of the kind of lace panel if that makes sense um yeah and then I'm not doing the pattern on the back um so anyway this is where I'm at so this is the patterned front of the sock it's got this gorgeous kind of fake cable for the cuff um which was really fun actually I really enjoyed that um and then the fake cable continues down into the um, continues down into the pattern of the sock as well which did take a little bit of rejigging the stitches on my needles because I had extra stitches on the needles in order to make sure that they still lined up I did have to move some stitches around a little bit and move the beginning of the round um, but I have successfully done it so I'm quite pleased with that um, and then as I said I'm just doing the back of the leg I still did the cabley rib but I'm just doing the back of the leg plain stocking stitch um, so yeah, not masses done. Um, it is a relatively simple pattern. Um, it's only a four row re repeat and two of those rows are basically just knits and pearls. Um, so that makes it really quite nice and simple. It's not an overly complicated pattern. Um, but yeah, I also, I didn't wind 50 grams off. Why didn't I wind 50 grams off? I should have done that before I cast it on and then I could be knitting them concurrently and then I wouldn't have issues with second sock syndrome. But I didn't, so yeah, we will see. I haven't, talking about second sock syndrome, I haven't cast on the second sock of my Christmas Eve cast on socks, my Christmas Day chaos. Um, I haven't cast those on yet, so I really need to do that this week because I could do with some um, vanilla sock knitting on the go, actually. Um, but there's something about casting on a rib. Does anyone else get this or is this just me? There's something about casting on a rib that you just put off, like the idea of having to knit the rib so that you can get to the more relaxing, mindless knitting. I don't know why. It's ridiculous. Um, but maybe I'll do that this afternoon. Um, but yeah, one pair of pattern socks on the go. I want to knit more pattern socks this year. I really like them. And actually, when I reach for socks in my sock drawer, I quite often reach for the patterned ones. I find I enjoy wearing them more. Um, so I definitely need to knit more patterned socks this year. Um, here's a question for you. What is your favourite sock pattern in terms of, like, in a patterned sock, what is your favourite sock pattern? Um, I have so many in my Ravelry library that I probably don't need more recommendations, but I love recommendations for patterns. So um, let me know down below in the comments what your favourite um, patterned sock pattern is, because um, that'll be interesting to know. So that's, that's not all the knitting actually. We're gonna move on to yarny goodness. 
Um, and as part of that, I'm gonna talk about a blanket. So you're gonna see a bit more knitting. But to start with, I have got two little bits of yarny goodness that arrived in the post this week. Um, first of all is um, one of the yarn clubs that I have signed up for this year and that is um, Hannah at Chromatic Yarns, her or the Corner of Craft, however you best know Hannah. Um, she is doing a um, Knitical Role yarn club which is inspired by Campaign 3 of Critical Role. Um, Tom and I are currently watching Campaign 3, we both have finished Campaign 2 and we are now watching Campaign 3 and keeping up to date with it. So I couldn't resist um, signing up and doing the yarn club and getting all the Campaign 3 inspired yarns as we're watching it and as it's going along. Um, so this is um, the January skein and isn't that gorgeous? It is absolutely stunning. It is called I Want to Stay Up and See to See the Sunrise and it is inspired by Bertrand Bell. Um, I won't give any spoilers but yeah it is inspired by Bertrand Bell, one of the characters and it is absolutely stunning. Such a beautiful colourway. I've got no idea what I'm going to do with these. I think I'm just going to collect them throughout the year and then I'll make a decision. But at the moment, this one is screaming, um, hello camera, come back and focus on me. Thank you. At the moment, <laughs> this one is screaming, um, like, uh, so faded sweater at me. I love the idea of maybe being able to put a few together and knitting another so faded sweater or something like that, or just a garment and using multiple skeins and doing something like that with this. Stunning, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna hopefully get all of these throughout the year. Um, that is my plan. The other club that I'm gonna be doing during the year is um, Erin Henny Penny Makes' this Colour Therapy Club because she's doing a second year of it. And I was talking, if you remember, last time I talked about this blanket, I was talking about wanting to make it bigger because I didn't feel like the 12 blocks that I was gonna be creating was gonna make a big enough blanket. So when she said she was going to be doing another year of it, I thought, well, that's perfect because that's how I make it bigger. Um, and I get the scrappy sets from Erin. She does a, ver a variety of different options. I think you can get them in 10 gram, 20 gram minis. Um, but I get the little five gram scrappy bobbins. This is gonna crinkle a second. And the last three arrived today because I forgot to order a couple of them and Erin held some back for me. And then I remembered to order the last one and she sent them all in one go. So I think purple, that's the purple set. And then there's a brown set how well you can see these I should have taken the there's a brown set and then there's also a gray set so those arrived but I thought we'd have a quick look at all the other sets and all of the bits that I'd done so far so I've actually made one two three four five of the blocks so far so January last year so January 2021 started off with pink and I'm making the Stitch, uh, Stitch in Time blanket, which is a pattern by um, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. So the first one is pink. And then I have got the second one was red. Then we had orange. Then we had yellow. And then we had green. And then I'm currently working on, or at least I think I've cast it on. This is where we find out. Oh, I've kind of cast it on. Um, so I've lost the needle actually. It's probably under the sofa somewhere. I have to hunt that down before I can carry on with this. Then we had um, like teal turquoise. So I've just sort of started the first square. And then those are all the colors in the teal turquoise selection. And then I've got the other ones in here. So then we have got, did it go blue or did it go, hang on. Yeah, so then we've got, um, uh, how did the Alpha rainbow go? Green, tur teal turquoise, so then it would be blue, the blue set. Then there is an indigo set 
And then there's also a violet set, which is noticeably different to the purple set. <laughs> um, so I really want to pick this up and carry on with this. Um, but I also really want to get those projects finished that I was talking about. I've also been saving, because um, I get, because you get, I'm trying to not crinkle, because you get 10 scrappy bobbins in each month of the club, um, I have been setting one aside each month um, because I'm only using nine and I've been picking out one of the semi-solids and I've been setting them aside each month um, to then use them in a pair of scrappy socks. So I'll have like a pair of rainbow scrappy socks to match the blanket at the end, which I'm going to continue doing. Um, so I've definitely one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so I've got six in there. You can see there sort of pink, red, orange, yellow, green, and then that sort of turquoise colour there as well. So I'm going to keep doing that, but I think I'm going to do a pair of scrappy socks with the 2021 version, and then I'll do the same, and I'll do a pair of scrappy socks with the 2022 version. Um, so yeah, I also have a whole host of little tiny scraps left. I don't know how much is on each of these, but they need to get wound off at some point and stuck into a magic knot ball so that I can put them into my mild mayhem blanket. Um, but yeah. So they're my clubs. My plans for clubs this year are to get the Chromatic Yarns Club and also to carry on with Erin's um, Colour Therapy Club. And then as I have been, I will dip in and out of um, Laura at Bumbling Yarns. I'll dip in and out of her Scrappy Club as well. Um, but yeah, here's another question. It's all about the questions this week. Um, what clubs have you signed up for? Excluding mine, obviously, because I know there'll be a number of you watching this that have signed up for my club, which I'm very, very grateful for. And Peter Rabbit has all been dyed and I've just suddenly had a moment's panic that you might be able to see it, but you can't because it's on the floor behind me. Peter Rabbit has all been dyed. Um, my camera is all over the place. I'm moving around too much. Um, Peter Rabbit has all been dyed um, and it's mostly been skeined. I've got the last little bit of skeining to do today. Um, and that will be all done. And then this afternoon, I am planning a test run for the Hobbit Club, uh, for the Lord, uh, the what's it called? Middle Earth Minis Club. Um, I've got a test run planned for the Middle Earth Minis Club. I have got all of the colorways planned out for the Hobbit um, for the next three months. And um, I'm excited to start dyeing them. I'm terrified to start dyeing them because I have an idea in my head and it's always scary to know whether that's gonna work, but, Fingers crossed, it will. I am test dyeing those this afternoon. Right, what else was I gonna talk about? Shop news, I guess. We'll move on to some shop news. Um, so, I, as I said earlier, I've got a shop update planned on the 28th of January. Um, it should be quite a big shop update. I'm hoping to get everything done for it. Um, but I'm hoping to get a little bit of poinsettia, which was my one of my Christmas self-striping colourways. Um, I know a number of you were disappointed to have missed out on it, so I'm going to try and get another batch up for this shop update. Um, I'm hoping to have the full Narnia collection dyed up and ready to go. Um, I've picked out 10 colours. Um, oh, I was going to bring the minis so that I could show you which 10 colours I've picked, but I've forgotten to. I will share them with you next week. Um, so I've picked 10 colours and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dye up 100 gram skeins of those colours and then I'm also going to put together um, some little mini bundles which have got 10, um, 10 gram minis in. Um, so obviously if you didn't get the advent calendar then you've got kind of, you can get sort of 10 of those 24 colours um, available in these little mini bundles as well as full skeins of some of my favourites from the select the collection. Um, and then I've also got a brand new Valentine's sock set that I'm going to be releasing and I've also got a bit of a fun plan with colour of the month. Um, so in fact, you know what, let me just sort some of this mess out and then I will tell you about my fun plans for colour of the month. Okay, colour of the month plan. So but I wanted to do something that was just going to be daft and fun and just enjoyable for me. It didn't necessarily fit with my normal style or it didn't necessarily fit with any of the kind of choices or inspirations that I normally use. And over um, New Year, we got, as a family, we got a little bit obsessed with the Wombo Art app, which is, um, oh, I'm just going to see if I can try and find it. Where's it gone? Here it is. Um, 
so it's I don't know if you'll be able to see it's this little app just there no you're not gonna be able to see that are you it's not gonna fit anyway it's called Wombo Dream and it is a free app that you download and it creates a it's basically um, artificial intelligence created artwork so you put in a prompt of some kind and you choose an art style and it will create a piece of digital art um, based on that art style and every time you put even if you put the same word in you get something different um, and it was just just really fun and the boys absolutely loved it and over New Year we had so much fun um, we spent New Year in um, a premiere in um, on our way back up to Scotland um, so we were trying to entertain the boys and we had so much fun doing doing this and I thought Do you know what would be really fun is if I just went through and put in each month as a prompt and saw what artwork would be created. So we did that. So I put in January and I can't for the life of me remember which art style we picked for any of these, um, but I put in January as a prompt and this is what we're going with. I will pop it up on the screen because holding up my phone is not gonna work. Um, so this is the prompt that came up, the picture that came up when we input January into this app and this is the piece of artwork that I'm going to use to dye up a colourway and I think each month I will just dye up um I will dye up I don't know quite what whether I'm I might do sock sets actually because that's always quite fun and they're quite popular um so I might dye up um some 100 gram skeins and some 50 gram skeins and just put together a few sock sets um, they won't be, um, I, they, I, I won't necessarily repeat them very often, um, it's just a bit of fun basically. It gives me a chance to be creative in the pans without having to think very carefully about what I'm dyeing and it just seemed fun. Anyway, I've rambled about that for ages, um, but yeah, each month we're going to create a colourway based on one of these pieces of digital artwork um, just for fun. So that's everything I think that's going to be going into the shop update yeah on the 28th of January hopefully at um 7 30 I think is my new update time it seems to have been working quite well it falls just between the kids bedtimes so I don't tend to forget about it <laughs> right in other news um what was I going to talk about in other news um week in vlogs um I had initially planned apparently according to my diary to do a week in vlogs this week but it completely threw me when I looked at my diary this morning and realized that um so I'm going to do it next week instead <laughs> um, and actually a lot of what I'm going to be dyeing next week I'll be dyeing for the shop update so I'll be able to share it in color whereas what I'm dyeing this week is very much yarn club so I'm not going to be able to share it in color anyway so next week will fit in better um, with that so we'll get a week in vlogs sharing leading up to the shop update actually which might be quite nice um, and then the other thing is our garage we have had a quote from a couple of builders now and we've got one builder in particular who they do everything so they have they have architects who come in and do the drawings and do all of that kind of stuff for you and it's all included in like your quote is all the architects drawings and everything um, and yeah, it sounds promising. So I think we may have found our builder and it's looking like we could be getting it done sooner rather than later, which is terrifying because it's a massive thing to do. I've never, like, I've only owned a house for six months and now we're talking about changing that house massively and turning our garage into an extra room. And it's really nerve wracking. Um, but the plan is to convert the whole garage into one room and have that as an office slash spare bedroom. Um, we've got a sofa bed um, that works quite nicely. So it will be an office the majority of the time. But when people stay, we'll be able to, when people come to stay, we'll be able to pull the sofa bed out and they'll be able to have a separate room that they sleep in or we sleep in and they have our room, however it works. Um, so that's going to be really, really good. Apparently it should take a couple of weeks. I'm a little bit nervous about how I'm going to work um, around those couple of weeks. I'm going to need to be a bit organised and prep stuff in advance and try and get ahead of get ahead for clubs and stuff. Um, but the plan is that I will then have the utility room and I will die in the utility room. Um, so we have plans and hopefully it should all work out and hopefully it will all go to plan. We'll see, it's terrifying and it's nerve wracking, but it's also very exciting. It would be nice to have an office 
which isn't freezing cold in the winter. That is the only issue we've had with the garage. It's been amazing and during the summer it was fantastic, um, but actually I find I tend to work quite a lot in the dining room because um, the garage gets really cold and I can't, I just can't sit out there for long periods of time without being completely bundled up in knitwear and a coat, which doesn't make working very comfortable. Um, so it will be good to get it done and yeah, it'll be good. I'm really nervous about it. <laughs> anyway, um, right, I should go because I need to start test running this um, Hobbit Club. But thank you very much for watching, as always, and I will see you again next week for a mass of videos, um, because you will have a podcast on Monday, you'll have daily vlogs for my week in January vlog series, and I think at the end of next week, or maybe I'll be recording it next week, but it won't go up until the week after, we're getting close to the end of January, so my monthly roundup video will be coming relatively soon as well. Um, yeah, lovely to hear from you, if you've commented which you may not have done, but if you haven't, then please do, because it would be lovely to hear from you. <laughs> and um, please, if you have enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up um, down below, because that really does help get the video out there. And I would like to continue to grow my channel. Um, but I will see you all next week. Bye. <laughs>